my guys. It is a gray, gloomy, drizzly, but otherwise pleasant spring day here in the Orwellian police state lockdown here in Garfield, Texas. And it is Friday morning, April 17th, 2020, and I am Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza. And since it is Friday, we are doing what we do every uh, Friday, and that's going over to mangabay.com for the latest news of what's going on on this collapsing planet. So uh, Manga Bay, kind of like this channel, has almost become two different roundups where they do their Corona Panic uh, stories about how the Corona Panic is, is you know, unleashing a wave of absolute ecological destruction across the planet. Uh, so, I've already done the Corona Panic Roundup, so make sure you go over there and hear that, especially if you're suffering some ridiculous, apocalyptic, hopium, fuel delusion that the uh, corona panic is good for the the earth then uh, I think Rhett Butler and the folks at Manga Bay will set you straight on that they will uh, disabuse you of that notion so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to those stories uh, about how this planet is collapsing that have nothing to do with the corona panic. Uh, and since these are environmental stories that don't have the corona panic in the headline, means that you are not going to find any of this anywhere on the mainstream media. So Manga Bay is about the only place on the planet bringing you this information that this planet is collapsing with or without the coronavirus. So now that we've heard how it's collapsing because of the coronavirus, let's look at a few stories of how the planet is collapsing this week with no help from the coronavirus. All right. Uh, Well, first I gotta find a story that's not uh, without the C word. I have to get pretty far down to find the first story without the uh, C word. Okay, we're gonna start over there in Indonesia with this shocking story. <clears throat> this is why I love Manga Bay because I never would have been able to uh, think of this on my own. Indonesia's miners exploit loopholes to avoid restoring mining sites. Abandoned mining pits litter the landscape across Indonesia, posing both environmental and public health problems. And of course, you, you, you can insert any country on the planet, including the United States for Indonesia. And just reread that sentence. Abandoned mining pits litter the landscape across the entire planet, posing both environmental and public health problems. But we're just going to look at, at, at Indonesia as one little example of this. Mining companies, as they are in the U.S., are required by law to rehabilitate their concessions after their operations end, uh, operations end, but loopholes and blind spots in the regulatory framework allow them to shirk this obligation. Imagine that. A new report by one of these environmental uh, organizations identifies these loopholes, yes, and the specific ways they allow miners to get away without punishment, failing to restore their concessions. Hmm. And the problem could get worse, meaning the problem will 
get worse with the impending passage of two bills in Parliament that seek even further deregulation of the mining sector, including the dismantling of environmental protections, which is exactly what is going on right here in the United States. I was just reading an article that one of you sent me uh, a couple of days ago about these, uh, what are they called? What's the, there's a term for them, I think orphaned orphaned oil wells, how, you know, with these frackers uh, fleeing uh, and packing up their bags, they're just leaving uh, all of this crap for the U.S. taxpayers and the planet to deal with. And of course, uh, this is true everywhere all over this planet as these oil companies are, are closing up shop and firing everybody and, uh, and, and running back to, so these executives can go hide in their bunkers uh, that all over this planet. Uh, they're just packing up and leaving uh, oil spills uh, everywhere not being reported anyway. But that's what's going on in Indonesia. Uh, Okay. One of these articles about wood biomass. Uh, a new study projects that 30% more forest cover if wood biomass is, <coughs> is managed right, while critics call it a disaster. Yes, it is. Wood biomass is a controversial fuel. The European Union's Renewable Energy Directive, oh yes, considers it carbon neutral, which is again like considering Sancho Panza to be a pit bull, while critics say reforestation of areas takes too long to make up for carbon sink loss. Yes. Do you think so? Uh, I I anyway, guys, enough of this. This this whole absurd debate uh, at whether or not wood biomass uh, from living trees uh, is a renewable energy source. It, it is one more way these planet eaters are, are uh, given license to kill uh, under the guise of, of renewable energy. This, you know, I'm sure this is part of the UN sustainability goals. Any clueless moron on this planet thinking for one minute that uh, burning up millions of acres of forest for biomass energy is, uh, is sustainable or renewable. You are so clueless, you might as well just go back over to where, to some cute cat video. Uh, but anyway, all of this stuff about rescuing orangutans we've been uh, hearing about over the years. So what is the latest research? Rescuing orangutans does not work for the apes or forests, studies find. New research suggests taking orangutans from degraded habitat and moving them to new areas is not good for the animals themselves and negatively affects foreign conservation efforts. Yes. Uh, but, and others argue that, in many situations, orangutans need to be moved to avoid conflict with fruit farmers and risk being shot if they are just left behind. Uh, again, one more example of frying pan or the fire. 
it doesn't matter wh what we do with the orangutans. Uh, they are screwed whether we move them uh, out of the fire into the frying pan or just leave them in the fire. Okay? as long as orangutans are sharing their habitat with humans, orangutans are screwed. You can say this about gorillas, chimpanzees, and any other species of animal on planet Earth. All right. Let's go over to Colombia. In a Colombian wetland, oil woes deepen with the arrival of fracking. The wetlands around the Colombian city of, that I cannot pronounce have for a long time been battered by pollution, including from the region's oil industry. Fishermen say the century of oil extraction here has failed to yield the promised social and economic dividends while compromising local water resources. And now the state oil company Ecopetrol, I cannot make this up, the, the Colombian oil, state-owned oil company is named Ecopetrol. Petrol. <laughs> Eco Petrol now plans to add fracking uh, in a series of pilot projects here, but many communities are skeptical that it will be done responsibly by Eco Petrol. Yes, do you think so? What is going on? on in the chocolate industry. Uh, this is what is behind my happy belly, my, he my happy belly uh, granola. Let me find out, let me find out what is going on inside my, my happy belly granola. <clears throat> positive ways forward for the chocolate industry are tainted by deforestation and child labor. <clears throat> the world's major chocolate companies, I think this might be M&M's in here, have for years vowed to rid their supply chains of child labor and deforestation without much success. Yes. Uh, <laughs> do you think so anyway? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh yes, it is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day this week. Uh, when is Earth Day? Five days from now, the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. I, I, I can only imagine uh, how much uh, where Earth Day uh, is going to place in the middle of the doot panic. Anyway, uh, wow. <laughs> uh, here, here, you, here you go uh, again. Thank you, Rhett Butler, for explaining this to me because I never would have figured this out on my own. Sancho, you need to listen to this because you would not have figured this out on your own. For Brazilian agro-businesses, leaving the Amazon forested is a problem. Agro-business proponents uh, plan to create the, a joint agricultural area called a macro, yes, uh, inspired by the multi-state region that is now the country's grain-growing heartland. But 
Studies show that the development of the serrato biome, you know, the one they're basing the Amazon one on, has itself resulted in massive deforestation. Forest areas 12 times the size of New York City was lost in their, you know, their little planet-eating area from 2013 to 2015 alone, and critics warn that this will be repeated in the Amazon with a Marco. And that has been confirmed by the, by the project's own founder, Asuero Doca Verones, who says, quote, deforestation is a synonym for progress and, quote, all the areas within the legal limits will definitely be cleared. Verones also says that Acre State has, quote, some of the best land in Brazil, but this land has one problem. It is covered in forest. Uh, you, you know, guys, all you can do is laugh. Okay. So, let's go, let's go back to Indonesia. Indonesia will not sacrifice its economy for more ambitious emissions cuts. Indonesia will not make the deeper emissions cuts needed to stave off catastrophic climate change because it wants to pursue economic growth, officials say. The country is one of the world's biggest emitters, largely through deforestation, and is on track to increase its absolute volume of emissions by 2030 while still achieving its targeted reductions as a proportion of its baseline. Yes, that increase will be driven mostly by coal-fired power plants as the government looks to boost economic growth. Do you think so? And I think there's an associated story uh, down here. Uh, somewhere I know there's another story about this. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that was South Korea. We will get, you know, Indonesia, South Korea. It, it's all the same, people. It makes no difference. All right, but what is going on with coca? We, we talked about chocolate. Now let's talk about cocaine. This is by Rhett Butler himself, who just returned from South America with this eyewitness report. Uh, using satellites to alert an Amazonian indigenous community of coca encroachment. Yes. Uh, so Rhett's been down there exploring, exploring a cluster of potential deforestation hotspots. Uh, Red expected to find small-scale clearing for subsistence or local agriculture, but he was in for a bit of surprise. Forest within an indigenous reserve was being cleared for coca, otherwise known as cocaine, unbeknown to the local community. Yes. Given the sensitivity and the potential security implications of this issue, Manga, Net, Manga Bay will not be disclosing the name of the community or the location of the coca fields. I remember back in 2009 when I was down there reporting uh, about the uh, 
about oil exploration inside this indigenous reserve in Peru that I, when I was writing this article for uh, Manga Bay, uh, Rhett Butler begging me to get the hell out of there, uh, Sam. Uh, this is no joke. When we, when we uh, run your article, uh, you will be targeted. And uh, so I took his advice, and I found out later that is exactly uh, what happened. Uh, as my picture was plastered all over this indigenous community as being a uh, whatever. All right. What one of the world's most active volcanoes tells us about missing trees. This is a very complicated story. Uh, but the bottom line is the researchers found that large fruited trees faded away from the landscape after the animals that were capable of dispersing their seeds were lost because of overhunting, habitat loss, and introduction of invasive species by human settlers. That what it's talking about is after a volcano erupts that the natural forest can no longer regenerate because humans have eradicated those species that could disperse the seeds. Uh, we can repeat that story uh, how many times. Okay, what is going on with amphibians in Uganda? Take a wild guess what is going on with amphibians in Uganda. Yes, uh, a field survey by herpetologists has failed to find any signs of the Mount Elgon torrent frog in its native Uganda, raising concerns about the degradation of Ugandan wetland habitats. There are 80 to 100 amphibian species in Uganda, but their habitats are being drained to create farmland and livestock pasture or to build residential areas and industrial parks. Many of Uganda's wetlands are also affected by water pollution caused by fertilizer and pesticide runoff from both large and small-scale farming as well as industrial effluent and sewage from growing urban centers. Yes. Do you think so? Take that story from Uganda. Insert the name of any country on the planet, including the United States. You will have the same story. All right, what's going on in South Korea, from Uganda to South Korea? Green groups, green groups, target South Korea's bailout of coal power plant builder. Environmental groups are seeking an injunction against an $825 million bailout by the South Korean government for Doosan Heavy Industries and Construction Company, a builder of coal-fired power plants. 80% of Doosan's revenue comes from building coal power plants, including highly polluting ones in South and Southeast Asia, where it is subject to less stringent air pollution standards than in South Korea. Yes. Uh, at a shareholder meeting days after the bailout decision, 
the company said it wanted to maximize revenue from its core business, coal, before expanding into new activities. Do you think so? Okay, if, if any of you know where we can find more viable female Sumatran rhinos uh, to save the rhinos, just uh, if you send me an email to the Collapse Chronicles, uh, I mean, not the Collapse Chronicles, Collapse Chronicles at gmail.com, I will, I, I will let them know that you have a reproductively viable Sumatran rhino. Yes, that you want taken off your hands. Uh, anyway, uh, let's just end up in Nigeria. Uh, a good a uh, good a place as any. We're going to end up in the Econ Wan Reserve in Nigeria which is managed by the Nigerian government. But illegal activities such as farming, logging, and hunting inside the protected area are rampant. Yes. Do you think so? Uh, farming, logging, and hunting rampant in a Nigerian protected area. Uh, why do I do this, guys? I mean, I honestly don't know why I do this to myself. But anyway, I need to wrap up the second Manga Bay Roundup. Thank you, Rhett Butler and the guys. Uh, if you enjoyed what Rhett had to share with you here and over on the other ramp, please spend a few minutes thumbing up Rhett's hard work and do subscribe when you're over here. And with that, I need to get back to the Orwellian police state lockdown because I was hoping uh, to get my gas-sucking lawnmower cranked up and get my lawn mowed for tomorrow's open house before the big thunderstorm moves in in a couple of hours, although I think the grass is already too wet to mow. Get out there and enjoy your own Orwellian police state lockdown while you still can. Bye, guys.